Okay. Is it recording again? Yeah. Can you turn the screen back around? Are we going to have to keep doing this? I don't know. Ew. That's going. So anyways, I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by George over here. No, Gordon. His name's Gordon. His Gordon. camera's name is Gordon. Which... After Gordon Willis, the cinematographer. Okay. Which is, okay. But, um, yeah, every episode or so we're going to have, probably at the end. Can gonna... I have mine? No, we're going to explain why we're doing this. Okay. Do you want to do yours first? Do yours first. It's fine. No, no, you can do it. <laughs> no, I was saying that every episode we're going to have, um, we're going to watch lots of films between each episode, but we're going to take the five most that we were either struck as in worst or best that we've seen, because talking about bad movies is always fun. <coughs> Gangster Squad, um, which I did see recently, which I will discuss later, which was... Les Miserables. Yeah, Les, Les Miserables, which is what it should be called, because it was miserably bad. You realize that Les Miserables means the miserable. Yeah, I know, but I should pronounce it miserable. It's already miserable. I know. I'm being dumb again. Go on, you can do your thing now. Well, um... I say things dumb sometimes. He's very self-deprecating, and that's usually my thing. He got me started with the deprecation. Is that a word? Anyway. Deprecation is a word. Self-deprecation. Um, five of my favorite films off the top of my head, um, in my large list of at least 300. Um, Bringing Up Baby, from 1938, directed by Howard Hawks. Fantastic, with, uh, fantastic film with Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn. Um, Wonderful hijinks, just a, a gem in the screwball canon. Um, I want to say Melancholia, directed by um, Lars von Trier from 2011 with Kirsten Dunst. Um, absolutely transcendent work. Um, Manhattan from 1979, directed by Woody Allen. F superb cinematography, which is why I named my partly why I named my the camera that I'm using. Um, Gordon. By the way, everybody check out his, his photography, 24fps. Truth at 24fps.tumblr.com. It's fucking awesome. Anyways, go on. Um, thank you, you're too kind. Um, yeah, so Manhattan is just a kind of, it's a little questionable and prophetic now, um, in terms of the relationship between um, Isaac and um, um, Tracy, but I think it's just a really gorgeous film. Um, I, I, kind of a companion piece double feature, and I know I'm cheating, but uh, Vive Civi by Jean-Luc Godard and Knights of Kiberia by Federico Fellini. Absolutely heartbreaking um, portraits of um, prostitutes. Absolutely fantastic film. And I suppose the geek in me wants to say Star Wars from 1977, directed by George Lucas, um, based on Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress. Pretty much stole everything in that film from either Joseph Campbell or Kurosawa, but I don't care. It's so much fun, and I can watch it over and over. There's going to be a lot of name dropping that he does that I don't do, because I don't know many names of people besides the directors. I know Roger it, Deakins, but... It really doesn't matter. But you... you sound, he sounds a lot smarter. I, I will cut this out. Don't cut the the loveliness of a podcast is you don't cut the boring or no do 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 you realize that in podcasts there is editing yeah I know but we don't have to be like everybody else okay so this is banter that's fun for people okay. to watch he's so, writing more things to talk about no. oh what's next Oscars uh, Oscars last year it was Oscars because Drive only got one fucker nomination oh yeah, I love Nicholas Winding Refn he's my and him him and Ryan Gosling are like my heart. He has a really big man crush on Ryan Gosling. I do. Isn't he wonderful? I'm not just saying that's because he's attractive. He's actually a very versatile actor who is great. Don't you shake your head. He's awesome. Except, I feel bad for him in Gangster Squad. I'm going to talk about that now because that was... Ex Gangster Squad angered me for a lot of reasons. Can I talk about this now without you mouthing into the camera? Sure. Thank you. No, but um, Gangster Squad kind of... What are you mouthing? Just tell me. Just, just say it out loud. This is the fun, so you can say it out loud. No, you can go on. Just go on. I wanted to do it on video so you can capture these looks and things that he sh throws at me when I want to talk about things that he doesn't think are good. I didn't say it wasn't good, I was just <laughs> making fun of you for your Ryan Gosling man crush. Oh, okay. Well, that's out there now. No, um, no, I mean, my man crush is, I have a man crush on Matt Bomer. He's gorgeous. I know. But there are things that <laughs> Joe has said about Ryan Gosling. No, no I that haven't. a little questionable. Okay, anyways, Gangster Squad was, um, it was annoying for a lot of reasons, um, because basically it had a 
huge amount of great actors in it. I mean, Josh Brolin, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, even Sean Penn, who was great. He's been weird recently, but they're all great and talented actors that have, you know, more than driven their own films and made them good. But this one, they all were never given a single chance to act by the script at all. The script was so thin and cliched, it dragged the entire film down. This is like the perfect example of how a script can ruin a good movie. Um, the pacing was good, but I just wasn't interested because at all in the film. I almost fell asleep a couple times, even during the action scenes, because I just didn't care about the characters because the writing was so bad. And all the moments that could have been good were all just either cut short or they were squandered by the bad act, by the bad writing. Uh, all the chemistry that you know fizzled and bubbled and made Crazy Stupid Love explode with Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone just wasn't there at all in Gangster Squad. He didn't see it. Like I said, I work in movie theater, so I can just go and watch whatever I want. So I decided to go watch that, which was a bad idea because it was not good. So I feel bad because I feel bad for Ryan Gosling because he has three other good movies coming out this year that should be very good. Place Beyond Pines, Only God Forgives, and the Terrence Malick movie. I don't know what it's called. i been working on it for like a year with every single star ever. Um, but I'm excited for those three just because Place Beyond Pines was Blue Valentine's director Derek, Derek C. in France, and then uh, Only God Forgives, another Nicholas Winding Refn team up, which I'm also stoked for, but I got off track with the Oscar thing. Yeah, he did. I'm sorry. I, it got me upset that Drive only got nominated for sound editing, I think it was, or sound design. I think it was sound design, and they didn't win, which mm. upset me. But anyways, Oscars. I think Oscar season is like flu season. It's just not, it settles in that once you get your flu shot, you're not going to have to deal with it anymore. But then you actually get really sick because you realize <laughs> how sad the nominations can be. And I've This been, year they weren't that sad. They are predictable, but they weren't but that bad. I, I, I have been in my free time reading Pictures at a Revolution by Mark Harris. It's a really great um, nonfiction book about the um, films that were nominated for Best Picture in 1967 and how they came from inception to finished product to whoever won that year. Um, and then how those films influence um, the new wave in Hollywood. And through that book, they go through um, different Oscar history. And you look at it and you realize that Oscar history can be really, really painful to look at, at how um, much of a conglomerate it can be. Your appendage went off. Yeah. That's my cell phone. But... <laughs> I made a joke. Go on. How they tend to overlook things and how they tend to be... Uh, tend to not nominate films that fall uh, under a certain category that would be daring. With the exception of the... It, even within the films that were nominated in 1967, there are certain films that still fell into being very conventional. The exception of maybe Bonnie and Clyde and The Graduate. I mean, each film had like different subversive elements of them, but... It's just very frustrating because then you look at Oscar history and what they've overlooked and what they haven't nominated. Like, Alfred Hitchcock never won an Oscar? Really? <laughs> so, on to Oscar season now. Uh, nominees being Argo, which I haven't seen, he did. Um, Les Mis. Okay. Anyways, Les Mis was not good. We'll talk about that in a bit. Because we can talk about that for a long time, how we didn't like it. Mainly just because of one name. Do you have the magazine? <laughs> Uber. Which one? No, it's downstairs. No, wait. Did I bring it upstairs? So. I did. Oh. oh, I did bring it upstairs. So we can have the list of nominees. Yeah. Alright, so Argo, Les Mis, um, Beast of the Southern Wild, which was overrated as all hell. Um, Zero Dark Thirty, which I just saw, which was outstanding, I think. It suffered a little bit from everybody knowing what was going to happen already. But I mean, Jessica Chastain has now made my life so much more complicated because I want Jennifer Lawrence to win for Silver Linings Playbook because I love her and the movie I thought was fantastic. Uh, but now they're battling in my mind and I don't like it. It's kind of painful for me. But uh, Django Unchained, which we both saw, I thought it was awesome. Classic Tarantino. I thought, you know, the, the pacing was fine. Well, I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was very much middling in terms of Tarantino's work. Um, but I will um, elaborate on that after. Okay. Uh, Life of Pi, which neither, neither of us have seen. seen. Lincoln, which neither, neither of us have seen. seen. I was going to go see it today, actually, but I I can't bring myself to go want to see that. I don't know why. I just have no interest in it. As much as I love the Turin horse, Lincoln looks boring. <laughs> Silver Linings Playbook, which I have seen. Which I have not. I thought it was awesome. 
Jeez. My mom saw that. How did you not see that yet? I don't get out often. He doesn't. I bring him out most of the time. Yeah. And yeah, that was it in Zero Dark Thirty. Amor. And oh, and Amor, which we will bring Real up piece. much later. Real. Yeah. Um, so, um, to start with Argo. Argo, I found was um, fine. It was fine. It was kind of for me a run of the mill drama, historical dramatization. It seemed rather married to the fact that it was based on a true story, which I think is an issue with that kind of film in general. So I felt that it lacked depth. But whatever depth it did, it, whatever depth it lacked, it did kind of make up for in the last act in terms of technical ability to create suspense. The last 30 minutes I thought were really, really well done. Um, but I, I really can't breathe in the last 30 minutes. Like, it's really intense. It's, it's very good. What I heard about it, though, from people that I, I've heard I've seen it, aside from you, was that it's tough. Uh, I know this, too. It's tough to be suspenseful in when a time you, when you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Same thing happened with Zero Dark Thirty, which probably did it better than Argo, mm -hmm. but I can't, I don't want to say that because I haven't seen Argo. We'll talk about Zero Dark Thirty later. But, um, yeah, I, 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 but Ben Affleck's work as a whole, as a director, I've been a real fan of. Um, I love the town in Gone Baby Gone. I haven't I, seen any of his work besides Argo. <laughs> you didn't see Gone Baby Gone? No. You said that it was a perfectly average film on Twitter or something. No, I said Argo was a perfectly average oh. film. Oh! Well, Gone Baby Gone, I think, was better than the town. Even though the town was great, I thought Gone Baby Gone had so much raw emotion in it. Just because Ben Affleck was a very, you know, you could tell he was a novice director. It was not A lot of the shots were not as technically, you know, prowess as... If you look at the difference between Gone Baby Gone and The Town, there's a huge, you know, technical difference between the two of them because he had a lot bigger budget, probably, and he and he was a lot more confident in himself. I've heard him talk about making the first film, but um.